Thanks for joining us. Another episode of B2B Bonfire. I am joined by Ryan Lee, COO and president of CBT Nuggets, a provider of on-demand technology training. Uh, how's it going today, Ryan? Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I've been really just very uh, interested kind of, you know, to see your perspective and how things may have shifted, you know, if you guys have had to kind of adapt at all, or just kind of what you're seeing in the marketplace as a technology provider that, you know, I would say is probably uniquely positioned and, and maybe has a, uh, you know, a little bit different experience now than I think maybe most companies who are scrambling. So is there anything interesting that, you know, you've kind of been seeing or what's kind of the most notable uh, thing I'd say from the past, you know, two weeks or so that's, it's uh, that you've seen. Sure. Well, thanks very much for having me. Um, and as you described, we are an on-demand IT training platform. We've been around for about 20 years. And so we've seen a few things uh, throughout our journey. Uh, for us as a team, one of the things that uh, we were very blessed with right from the start is we were able to work from home well even before some of the same at home orders came in. All of our teams were plugged in, had laptops, all the VoIP and all the stuff that we do. Uh, we didn't miss a beat. Um, but from a customer perspective, we definitely have seen quite a bit of an uptick in regards to, hey, the vast majority of the training that we've done in the past maybe physically brought someone into a building or we were just getting ready to go to a ton of different tech conferences and or we did a lot of classroom-based training and some of those things aren't available today. And so would love to better explore and understand what it means to have asynchronous or online training available to our teams. And then we've also had some customers, which I think has just been unbelievable, is some of them can't work as well from home as they normally could if they were physically there. And so they're taking advantage of this time to actually do the training. So we've got a lot of customers that have reached out to us and just said, hey, they're home. Uh, we don't have all the tools that we need right now. But one thing we can do is continue to let them learn and grow. And how can your platform help support that? And so we've heard a lot of customers ask for that as well, which is definitely a new thing um, than uh, what we would normally hear um, in the sense that we're just going to basically help support people and let them train. As it relates to events, this may not be totally under your purview, but um, I'm a product marketing manager and on our marketing team, obviously, uh, kind of what I've seen on LinkedIn too, is a lot of people in the early days when kind of all the big events were being uh, canceled. Is that something that impacted you guys at all? Or is that, you know, were you guys able to shift pretty quickly? We were, I mean, we were able to shift rather quickly, obviously, again, because we've got the streaming technology. There were some events that we were planning on attending and being at. Um, but we pivoted and um, have done some more virtual events, have done some things where we've brought our trainers online. And a good example is Cisco Live, obviously not happening. So um, we spun up a couple of good opportunities to do some webinars and talk through some of the things um, that we might have spoken about on stage um, that we can now just do virtually. But for us, not a huge shift, but I know for some people, a very big shift as, yeah. hey, that's the one event, that's the booth, that's the opportunity we get to see all these customers and now they're not coming. Uh, but I do think that there's a lot of great organizations out there and companies that have started to work towards going virtual. And I think they'll see some good results. Totally. Uh, just kind of a, a question too. Um, you know, you said that you guys were able to kind of transition to work from home without missing a beat. Is there any, you know, new ways or kind of fun things that you guys have done uh, to kind of keep people engaged and uh, give employees kind of that sense of, you know, consistency that's obviously lacking from, you know, not kind of going to a physical office and that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. So we take advantage of a lot of different communication tools and um, obviously Slack for us. It's kind of that one that works, but we've got anything set up from virtual yoga where people can uh, have the yoga instructor uh, be teaching, but working together. Um, we're doing a lot of virtual open door coffees. So there'll be times during the day where if you just want to come in and chat with different people, um, have a cup of coffee and, and just talk through What's going on in your world? We've got that available. Um, we're doing a lot of Twitch. And so we've got some really fun uh, virtual video games that we're doing. We've got a tournament going on right now uh, for Techno Bowl. Um, that anybody that's got a Nintendo Switch, um, we're working our way through that. Uh, we've got a few other um, kind of opportunities that just will pop up where if you want to grab a virtual lunch with someone. But I would say that we um, have an engagement team that works directly with us always. And they have gone engagement virtual. And so we're doing a lot of polling and asking questions and figuring out, you know, what are some things that people really miss and how can we potentially recreate that um, from our wonderful uh, platform right now that is Slack. 
Yeah, that's interesting. At, at Televerde, what we've done is uh, there's virtual cooking shows, like a kind of a chopped type format. Uh, our CEO, Morag Lucy, uh, her husband, Mike, uh, also works on our tech team. And we were talking with her and we could hear all this noise in the background. And we're like, you know, what, what's going on? She said, oh, he's, you know, they're, they're from the UK. So he was showing everyone how to make uh, whiskey sours. And they were doing like a virtual kind of pub bartending type thing. And I mean, he was really getting into it. It was, it was kind of interesting. That's not something I would have ever thought I'd see, you know, probably even three months ago. But, you know, it's, it's just really interesting to see how, you know, companies have kind of shifted just to bring, bring that, uh, like I said, that, that sense of just engagement too. And really you just have, you know, kind of a screen and a microphone. And it's interesting how people have, uh, you know, really adapted. Um, just but, kinda... we do, but, we, but, but we do have a screen and a microphone and we're humans. And one of the greatest things about us as a human race, in my opinion, is we always adapt. True. And I think one thing that people need to remember during times like this is one, two things. One, we will get through it. There's a way through. But number two, think about all the tools that you have today. And think about if this was to happen 50 years ago. Use those tools and see those as tools. Don't see those as um, objects of I can't, I can't. It's I can. I just have to think differently. And so I've been so, so impressed with our teams and watching so many other cool things happen with inside organizations, just as you described that we have incredible tools that we've never had before. And if we want to, and we want to leverage them and do it, we can stay pretty connected. It just takes a different type of effort. Yeah, I mean, that that is something that, you know, I've experienced, and I think pretty much anybody, you know, watching has experienced too. Uh, shifting just a little bit to kind of, what have you seen from, you know, in terms of the chief concerns of your customers? Is there anything you know, kind of notable that sticks out? Is there anything, you know, that you guys have maybe run into that you didn't think of or, you know, anything kind of down that road? Well, I definitely think for some of our customers that we work with that do require a bit more physicality, um, we have definitely heard from some of them that, you know, either were maybe cutting a few licenses or asking for some longer terms and things like that because they're really trying to scramble to figure out. We really do require some physicality. Um, we do a lot of tech um, for auto repair shops and a few things like that. And, you know, that's some of the stuff you can't always do virtual if you need to physically be there to um, swap out a brake pad or whatever that might be. Um, so we've heard some of that. Um, but I would say, you know, being in working with a lot of technologists, um, we've heard a lot of optimism, um, a lot of excitement. I think for a lot of IT professionals, when something like this has happened, it gives them a chance to maybe flex and leverage some of the ideas or tools or things that they've always wanted to do, but maybe haven't had buy-in, where now all of a sudden, we got 100% buy-in and we need you to do it faster than you ever thought you could before. And um, we've got some really good blog posts and just some stories of like 29 different IT professionals on in 24 hours, how do you go remote? And kind of from a tech side, what do you have to do? And they always find a way to get it done. Um, so I would say for the vast majority, we've heard more of positives and excitement than I would say we've heard of negatives or challenges. Yeah, I mean, that that totally makes sense. It's It's kind of funny too, even just from you know, our world and kind of thinking of, you know, content marketing and that sort of thing, there's a lot more anecdotes kind of to your point of going, um, you know, remote in 24 hours or kind of people, you know, giving more of a peek under the hood and, and kind of telling more stories about that sort of, uh, you know, kind of fast shift than, you know, your typical kind of business content and that sort of thing. So it's, it's really been interesting to see how much more open, I think, you know, the, the kind of communication, especially on LinkedIn and that sort of thing is because it's, it's, you know, everybody kind of like to talk about, you know, themselves at a certain level, but it's really interesting to see how people have come together and, you know, kind of told that story and kind of down that uh, road too. I'm curious if you guys are doing anything to kind of like give back or support the community or that sort of thing. For example, at Televerde, as you know, um, a large population of our workforce are incarcerated women. So what we've done through our foundation is making sure that the families of these women are, you know, supported and kind of have the things they need. And if they're struggling with anything, you know, for example, there's like, you know, food delivery and that sort of thing. Curious if you guys have, you know, kind of had the time uh, to do anything like that as well. Absolutely. So right off the bat, um, one of the things that we provide to all of our team members is free lunch. And so every one of our team members gets free lunch and obviously not having team members here and then having some concerns with coming into the home we took that staff that does all of that and we started to make lunches and provide lunches to our community for kids um, that can't go to school. And so we're doing a really cool program where we're delivering groceries and free lunch, um, both in uh, Eugene, which is our Lane County community, and Ben, where we have another office in Deschutes. So all the lunches and all the things that we normally provide to our team members, we're providing out to the community for free. So that's one big thing that just right to the community we thought we could help. 
The other thing is we created an initiative called teach.gg and we had all of our trainers um, start to work together to put together some of the best knowledge that they understand on how to use Google Classroom, how to use Moodle, and we've put that out for free. So any teacher or any student that is now looking to have to go online and get their online education, we wanted to provide as many tools as possible to help teach them to ensure that they understood how to set that up, you know, what are the different things that um, best case on how to teach during vir vir virtualization and things like that, since we know how to do that. Um, so we've done that. Anybody that's been laid off, um, we've got a program through our Nugget Love that will provide free six months of training um, to anyone that's been laid off. They contact through our Nugget Love team and uh, we'll do that. Um, we've also put out a lot of free content around remote work, a lot of skills and different training, um, just again, to um, put some stuff out there. We put a ton of free blog articles and content out of what we have heard. And then we obviously always have our seven days free that anyone can sign up for. And then we have a whole section within our website that's just free content. So we've tried to do as much as we can to continue to support both our local and global communities. Yeah, I'd say that's that's quite a bit in such a short amount of time. That's that's pretty interesting. Just uh, wondering to any other, you know, kind of closing thoughts, anything that uh, we maybe didn't discuss that you, uh, you know, think would be unique to share anything of that nature. I mean, I just I always think in times like this, it's hard for us to sometimes see the silver lining, but I would really encourage any leaders or any people in general that are thinking through this and, and living through this is keeping a journal and a notepad of what might be working better and what are some key opportunities that might come from this that even though you were forced into it there might be some better ways to do stuff and be open to that and don't just return back because we will return back we will get through this but don't just go back to the same old same old think about what has worked well and where potentially could we make some changes to even create a better experience for your customers or for your team members. So I would just really strongly encourage open-mindedness and look for that collateral beauty during times like this.